Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Maruti Key, but we are driving a Toyota Serra. Okay, the Toyota Serra is a very different sort of a car. It's not a sports car, but it looks like one. You know why? Because it's a two-door vehicle, and of course, the design language is something which will really attract you. But this car has been, you know, beaten all over the bush in the past few years. That's why it's not in the best of conditions. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to come to the rear and. Uh, you know the most funky part about this car is the canopy roof okay it has huge amounts of glass area and because of that glass area alone it brings in a lot of airy feeling inside the vehicle so as you can see yes that is also something which was a glass but now everything has been tinted so that obviously you don't have any issue with the sun or getting really hot inside you won't believe it that this was one of the first cars in the world to get a projector headlight setup yeah that's right a projector headlight setup and i remember someone in school had one as well that time they used to go for real cheap i think around 2 or 3 or 4 or some lakhs but uh, you know made a big statement as well tires on this car are obviously aftermarket and 205 6014s so in terms of tire size yes it is on the smaller size side actually and coming to the rear you see there's a disc you know why because the automatics came with this at the rear as well meanwhile the manual only came with front disc now the party trick of this car is of course the doors and this is how the doors open yes butterfly doors i kid you not the mclaren f1 okay look at this people are so interested in the car taking photos and what not but you know gordon more who made the mclaren f1 took inspiration from the toyota serra for the mclaren f1's doors yes it's not vice versa because this car obviously came earlier seating for two people at the rear but honestly no two people can sit at the rear obviously human beings cannot and there is no adjustable headrest anywhere inside the vehicle now you know what this door actually opens further than the one on the left side just so that it's easier for the driver to get in but right now the hinge is not working properly that's the reason it drops automatically and uh, coming to the other door this one actually holds for some time which means that i can show you a cool thing about the way the door is so this is how the door looks when it's up that looks kind of cool right of course it looks super cool the doors are actually the usp and uh, you see this is the window area meanwhile this was transparent and toyota actually used to give something to cover this so that the sun wouldn't hit you directly let's try and open the boot of the vehicle which is going to be another task because i have a maruti key in my hand which will not suffice i believe to open this uh, this will not suffice for sure so i don't know how to open the boot there's a spoiler but there's not much in the boot there's decent amount of space actually there was a speaker and this used to come with something very different so the speaker system on this vehicle had some different settings to bounce off sound from the rear and it also had a air fragrance too so a lot of different stuff inside this vehicle to make it look cool and obviously you know making a car this looks this cool with an engine which is not at all cool this is what happens the interior kind of feels basic as such not much on the inside but we'll try and get inside which is an effort all together so here we go and uh, yeah you don't have to put effort because this just falls on your face cluster is nice and yellow and it has got everything in analog including an odometer there's also a multi information display right below the tachometer there's a speedometer there's obviously a temperature meter as well as a fuel efficiency meter so what we are going to do is here let's see the temperature actually it's not working but the car is heated up it makes some weird noise till that noise does not go you cannot turn on the car steering feels really big that's what she said these are actually the controls for the air conditioning and these are various buttons i for i don't know for what actually this is for the indicator there's another temperature meter right there and you see there's something written in japanese this seems like an aftermarket system and there's a cigarette lighter that's the handbrake the storage space here which is so small now it's so small that you can actually measure it with a micrometer screw gauge or probably a vernier caliper too and glove box is decent size too meanwhile this is actually shifted here it was here originally but it has been shifted here for reason best known to the person who has been making more to the car there's a light placement right there and the dashboard doesn't feel bad at all even in modern times power window controls and of course this seems to be the child lock button this is the control for the outside rear view mirrors this is for the rear defogger and uh, things which you really don't care about do the wipers work let's try that no the wipers don't work a lot of things on this car don't work but do the brakes work well there's only one way to find out let's get going All right, it's show time. Uh, it's getting cut from you. No, no. So this is coming, right? Yeah, it's coming, but uh, 
If it rolls in, the frame is gonna cut. Uh, let me know. Okay. And we get it into drive mode. Okay, I've never been so tensed in my life because firstly I never ever thought there is a Sarah diesel, but this is a diesel Sarah. Sarah was only petrol, someone's gone and changed it and yeah, not that the handbrake works, but anyways, off we go onto the gas. Shows a very optimistic red line of 7,000 rpm and a red line of oh my god, the brakes are not working. Pump, 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 pump. Mm. Oh <laughs> that was scary, man. See the vibrations? It's absolutely crazy. The amount of vibrations from this car. So, the car might not be in the best of condition, but of course, it's a Toyota, so mechanically sound. Although, yeah, this is kind of weird. I'm like, yeah, what I'm is happening? I'm going to stop. <laughs> Pumping, braking is another thing which I've never seen in my life. Anyways, onto the gas, speedometer is not working, tachometer is not working, no need for the motor beam sticker today. Every time you apply brakes, well, <laughs> you have to pump them, there's some issue right now. But steering has no feel at all. The car looks really nice, but doesn't have the go. It's only show, there is no go whatsoever. This diesel engine has absolutely no thrust whatsoever. I don't know why. Okay, originally the car came with only a 1.5 litre petrol engine from the Corolla which produced around 100 horsepower and 132 Newton meters of torque, somewhere around that. This one sees a reduction because of the diesel engine. So I think torque has improved without a doubt. And I'm so used to braking normally that I'm finding it difficult without mirrors, without proper brakes as well. You see the steering has no feel, no feedback, but then that's something which Toyota has really mastered of not giving any feel or feedback in its cars. The diesel engine has ruined this car, I believe, because with a petrol engine, at least it was slick enough because of the lightweight, the diesel has obviously made it more front heavy. But more than being front heavy, it's become so noisy. This is the N1 diesel engine. I think it produces around maybe 60, 70 horsepower. Torque output must be 120, 130 Newton meters. These are just my guesstimates. I'm not really sure. But in terms of performance, there is none. There is none. This car is more of show than go. And in that sense, definitely... Okay, the horn is not working. And in that sense, it makes its mark. I don't understand why Toyota launched such a car. The only reason was, for, this was basically for the Japanese market. It was not meant for anywhere else. But since it's a right-hand drive, it went to a lot of right-hand drive countries as well. Because people imported it like, of course, UK, someone in India as well. And Australia too. Because there's certain Japanese things which are written all over the place onto the gas. Enough. Here we go. Okay, there's no response. You press the accelerator. You don't press the accelerator. There is no response. It has no effect at all whether you press the accelerator or you do not press the accelerator what you're going to do is we are going to try and take a u-turn which is going to be very easy actually is it well of course it will but not here the sound from the motor this should sound like a sports car it doesn't it just sounds loud very easily obviously it's a diesel car so it has to sound like a diesel the suspension is so soft so ride quality is good actually it's very good for a sports car but handling is rubbish body roll well there's plenty of it and just doesn't inspire you to push hard forget pushing hard if you have the power then you'll push hard now this car doesn't have any power only what will you push hard i never thought i'm going to say this but i'm going to say this right lane or left lane just take a right. Okay. I never thought I'm going to say this, but I'm going to say this right now. The fact is that the Indigo Marina had a better diesel engine. I never knew I would say a Tata having a better diesel engine than a Toyota, but that happens to be the fact. That happens to be the truth here. Unfortunately, everyone's staring at me. Hey, what's up? What's up? You know what? I've not even rolled up the windows because usually I'm worried wind noise will come. But the car doesn't have any pace as such. I know I went from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 100 years. Not that it matters because you guys can't even guess the speedometer is not working at the moment. This automatic gearbox is absolutely rubbish. It just doesn't, you know, shift. I don't know why it doesn't shift. Maybe it doesn't see any power being made. So it doesn't shift gears as well. I would love paddle shifters on this car. This car looks gorgeous. It deserves a very powerful engine to do justice. But then Toyota never actually made this as a sporty vehicle because this was like below the MR2. This was more about making a style statement with the doors, of course, being the highlight of this vehicle. You see, over bad roads, the car is super composed. It doesn't hinge at all. It just glides through, honestly. The ride quality is brilliant. But a soft suspension on a car which looks so sporty, well, doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, of course, because a lot of changes have been done to this car, including taking the original nice engine and throwing in a rather poor diesel engine. See around the corners. Get into the gas. You're like worried. And off we go. 
wheel spin in my dreams front wheel drive front engine no effect doesn't move at all i should have actually got couple of my phones and stuck them onto the rear view mirrors with the front camera on to actually see what's happening around because i can't see there's a lot of blind spot in this vehicle just too much of blind spot originally this car was known for the canopy and the airy feeling which of course right now is gone because we live in india which is very 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 hot and because of the heat uh you know the canopy has been covered so that feeling of having sort of a open top car is gone for a toss as well steering no feel whatsoever so if you're thinking that your toyota corolla or your toyota etios or any of your toyota cars lack in steering feel and times are changing no times are still the same with toyota they just don't know how to make a steering which offers any feel or feedback whatsoever that's a disappointing part but for me i'm driving a world exclusive car today a diesel engine toyota sera if the sera engineers come to know about a diesel power plant in the sera they would probably jump from the building in happiness saying that whoa when did that happen because only i think really i think 1500 or 15000 units were made only for jdm japanese domestic market but somehow whichever unit reached india saw its own set of modifications as well braking performance could obviously be much 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 better as well so piyush when he actually told me that i can drive the sera and it has a n1 diesel engine actually his father runs durga car decor here in pune so he sent me the list of the cars and it said toyota sera n1 diesel and i did a google search i searched everywhere and i was like diesel engine in a sera this little kid is high on weed or something of that sort but when today i saw the car i was like what the f this is absolutely crazy you know no matter if you drive a sports car or a supercar or a limousine we in india just love diesel because diesel fuel was apparently cheaper not any more though but fuel economy would obviously be better yahan se left mana hai na uh, left ya right but me actually right up here but up left mein hai guys so take a left i can take a right also don't worry how difficult is for me to take a right i don't have to see anything at all you remember there are no mirrors there's nothing of that sort okay now remember one thing coordinate with me when i'm going to take a left now yeah. you pop out your left hand when i take a right now you pop out your right hand make sure you don't hit me <laughs> you've seen that fantastic for one guy has his long hand his hands can get stretched yeah we should sell him this car because this car is on sale you know we are expecting 4.5 lakhs so they are expecting 4 and 1/2 lakhs for this two door four seater sports looking car with a diesel engine and a maruti ki which well you guys have to decide although i believe there's a lot of work which has to go into making this car really fun and road worthy as well we'll just do the work mm. and then we'll just sell the car okay just i expecting 4 and 1/2 lakh rupees after doing all the work on the car yeah oh that's nice so i don't mind buying the car just uh, like do all the work make sure you put a v8 engine in this i'm okay with a v12 or a w16 also maybe in next 100 years uh, i'll pay you also 100 year installment don't worry <laughs> Just imagine four and a half lakh rupees over hundred years amounts to what exactly? I think that's like forty-five thousand in ten years and four and a half thousand in a year, which when divided further is like four hundred rupees a month. And I think the running cost and the maintenance would be much higher than that in the next hundred years for sure. Hey, look at me! I'm so cool. Look at me, sports car. Nobody's looking at me. It's so disappointing. At least if you can't look at me, can you hear me? See the diesel engine? It's vibrating. Look at this. Yeah, that is some vibrations. Okay, Take guys. Okay, guys. Everybody, stay away from me, please. Take There's a, a policeman behind you. Just be careful. So we we'll go back. I'm going straight only. Okay, okay, let's go straight. We'll take a right. Turn. That's not a police van, bro. Well, there was a policeman. Yeah, that that van is not going to catch us. We are in a super cool car. Look at this. Here we go. Oh my God, the G forces. Okay, let's get onto the brakes. Don't get too excited. Today I have done what I'm not done in the gym in the past ten years, which is ankles. Every time I apply the brakes, pumping it. Well, I am actually making my ankles. My right ankle is going to become so strong. It's going to become so strong. That's the reason why my right foot is so heavy on the throttle every time. And here we go. Are we going to do a drift? No, we can't do a drift. It's front wheel drive. Why not convert it into rear wheel drive car? That will be super cool. They see me rolling, me pumping. That's how me stopping, stopping. I just don't understand. Why would you remove a fantastic? Okay, 
overrated fantastic 1.5 i know i'm talking too much 1.5 liter petrol engine with 100 horsepower and put a measly diesel engine which is noisy unrefined okay fuel efficient who cares about that the car is super light you can actually carry it around that's how light this vehicle is and it's so chintu as well so parking it driving it not a problem of course without mirrors it becomes a tedious job as well i believe you have to take a ride are we taking a ride yeah all right that's great we're taking a ride i can't see a thing it's a big thing. yeah just just go and off we go you know i've never been scared in my life driving a car when i was driving the mercedes from the top as well i felt i was in a video game and i was scared without a doubt but not this scared uh, straight yeah <laughs> you know when when i was going to drive the car here like you need to pump the brakes and i was like how hard can it be well turns out pretty much hard as well The fastest route possible so that I can get out of this car right. and finish my prayers, right? Yeah. There's a divider. I can see the divider. Don't worry. <laughs> How hard is the steering wheel? Uh, steering is not hard. The steering is just rubbish. So this is a difference between hard and rubbish. The problem is that the only the ride and the look factor of this car is pretty cool. Rest all is in very impressive. I know the brakes are they making me hate the experience right now. Once the brakes are addressed, things will be much more smoother without a doubt. And of course, all the gremlins when they are solved. But a diesel engine, well, I just don't understand that a car which looks so good, even with the 1.5 liter petrol, it had only show no go. With the diesel engine, it has backward go. That's kind of unfortunate. I know someone has just decided. Maybe that engine might have been got ruined or fallen off. After all, it's a Toyota engine; it cannot last so long either. Sarcasm alert. Why does the horn not work? Okay, here I am coming. Beep 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 beep. I think I need to change my horn. And obviously, you have got multiple modes on the gearbox as well, which basically there's two and low mode, which does nothing much really. It just maintains a lower gear or second gear in order for you to climb hills and all that stuff. But the power from this engine is so lackluster; you will never climb any hill. Honestly, you will never climb any hill. This car, in spite of being light, has a poor power to weight ratio because of the diesel engine. Pardon? You have to take a left. All righty, and off we go. Come on. Yeah, baby. This is the same cop car earlier. Yeah, I think the same. Stop! Stop! This is the color. This one. Yeah. I think I need to show my hand. Showing hand is not a problem because I've already put the indicator. Oh my God! It's working. The indicators are working. And yeah, stop looking at me. I'm so cool right now. But from the outside, I look cool. From the inside, I only know the troubles, the hard work. Omg. Worse than the Avanti, right? Avanti? No, there's nothing which can be worse than the Avanti. Trust me on this. This is absolutely, this is actually one lakh times better than the Avanti. Nothing can be worse than the Avanti, because at least this car has visual appeal. The Avanti felt so badly put together. So fit finish is not a problem here. Steering, I don't know if it if it has power assist or not. Doesn't feel heavy. Just doesn't have any feel. Look at this. I, you do can't really understand where you're going, what you're doing. That is the only problem. I am expecting us to take a left. Are yeah. we taking a left? See, yeah. that is without even having maps or connected car tech. I am able to. Don't come near me, boss. There's so much road. Please take it from there. He's looking at the car. <laughs> He would be looking at his car if he had not moved out on time. So you might be thinking that what is this Toyota Sera? It limited run car for the Japanese market. Fun, but the concept didn't really catch up. And when Toyota gave a massive sort of a panoramic roof in this vehicle, a lot of airy feeling and what not, people still didn't accept this car. And that's the reason Toyota like, F it, I'm not going to offer any sort of sunroof in my future cars as well. And that is the reason why the Fortuner also does not get a sunroof till date. Here we go. Come on, how far are we? Yeah, just a little bit. Maybe a kilometer. A kilometer. This seems like an endurance race to me today. It's never ending. I can't wait to stop. The diesel motor doesn't like to rev at all. 
absolutely not so as i can see the toyota sera is a gorgeous looking car but unfortunately it doesn't have the go to match its show and on that terrible disappointment it's time to end however i know a lot of you are going to be like what the car is so cool you should do something cool with it and if you really think that we should do something cool with it we're cornering and surprise is getting pop out of the vehicle but what i was thinking is that this car has huge potential as a project car so if you guys want motor beam to make a project car of this sera please email toyota sera project car at motorbeam.com and you have to be actually careful over bad roads because the ground clearance is also on the lower side and the engine ha doesn't like to rev it doesn't have any top end it doesn't have any mid range oh wait it doesn't even have any bottom end so what does it exactly have well it just propels you ahead and be thankful for that and on that i have already said it like this video if you enjoyed this experience of me driving some weirdly wacky cars without any sorts of brake why am i pumping the accelerator i'm so used to pumping right now now oh my god this is not a good sign bye bye this car is so hot it's so hot that you can see there is smoke coming out of it as well and before we get on fire i just want to tell you guys i love you bye bye